again, I want to welcome you to the Faith and Fandom Devotion of Avengers Infinity War. Um, we are specifically focusing on Thanos' decision on how he used the Infinity Gauntlet, um, his heart, his mind, his motivations, and what he was doing. Um, but these do contain spoilers, so if this is, you know, still fresh to you, you should watch Infinity War. But, um, so this whole time we see Thanos in the MCU from the first time we get a glimpse of him uh, to all of his little cameos post-credits, that the whole time we're aware that he's out for the Infinity Gauntlets. Um, we're aware that, not just the Gauntlet, he's out for the Infinity Stones. We're aware that he is seeking after these things, but it's, it's not really until we get to Infinity War that we see his big plan, his master stroke, is to truly level out half of all living beings in the universe and the crazy thing is in the movie the the motives seem almost altruistic like he generally does believe he's doing the right thing um you see plenty of people that have you know made posts or references that Thanos wasn't doing anything wrong or that Thanos actually had you know, good motives or whatever else, but the the thing that you see is Thanos believes what he's doing is the right thing. Thanos believes that in order to sustain life and in order to keep the world going, the universe going, in order to do all these things, he needs to cut life in half. And, you know, I've heard people make the arguments, well, you know, if everyone's going to die eventually anyway, why not go ahead and speed the process along so that people can live better? And that's just bananas to me. Um, I, I can't operate in that mindset. I can't function in that. But apparently that's the mindset that Thanos truly believed. Um, and however you felt about Avengers Infinity War, and that was the thing for me, I didn't jump right on doing an Avengers Infinity War devotional because I was pretty much dead inside um, after watching it. So I didn't just want to jump right into it. Um, but Thanos was resolute. Thanos was devoted in what he was doing. Thanos believed he was in the right. And the crazy thing is those des the description of those... Uh, being devoted to what you do, believing you're near the right, um, actually pursuing these things. If you believe you're in the right and you're devoted, but you're wrong, that's not a good thing. Um, if you believe you're doing the right thing and you're actually in the wrong for the choices you're making and the things that you're doing, you're actually going to end up doing more damage than good. And that's one of the hard parts is so often we can think we're doing the right thing, but end up totally doing the wrong thing, or you do the right thing with the wrong motives, and you end up doing the wrong thing, or you do the wrong thing with the right motives, and you still end up doing the wrong thing. And, uh, you know, as you watch Infinity War and you see this painful scene of like, the different people turning to dust and floating away from Spider-Man's heartbreaking I Don't Want to Go, which I personally believe was a direct uh, reference to Doctor Who, David Tennant's Doctor, um, to all the different ways that uh, James Gunn said Groot's last words were actually dad, like the translation of what he was saying to Rocket, his last words were dad. I mean, there's it was painful and there are all these consequences of the people dying and everything else or being absorbed into the soul stone, whatever route you want to take with that ideology. But Thanos believed he was right. And personally for me, that's that's what uh, I think that always is what defines a good villain. Is that a good villain thinks they're the hero. I think if a bad guy ever thinks they're the bad guy, it's a weak story. I think every good villain has to believe they're actually the good guy. And that makes for interesting storytelling. Because too often people don't actually ever believe they're the bad guy. They just think they're doing what they have to do. And uh, Thanos did what he thought he had to do. Thanos did what he thought it was going to take to provide salvation for the universe. And so we see that with that one snap, 
half of the universe was gone. And at the end of the story, you see Thanos sit down and smile and uh, take a breath. And if judging by the hue of the world around him, uh, people are speculating that Thanos himself was in the Soul Stone at that point. But um, I've actually heard some other people uh, reference Thanos at the end of Avengers Infinity War um, when he sat down and smiled or whatever else at the end. That they were comparing that to uh, in Genesis where you see and God rested and he saw everything he did was good and obviously i'm not saying that thanos is god or that that is even remotely the thing but i believe that that was the same kind of imagery they were going for that thanos was pleased with what he was doing but when we look hey jp um when we look at our lives we can probably think back to many instances where we thought we were doing the right thing but looking back, we realized we were totally wrong. And um, obviously, I think there's going to come a point where uh, we're going to we're th we're going to see a, a moment where Thanos is going to see that he didn't make the right choice. We're going to see, hey, Michelle, um, um, hey, uh, we're going to see that uh, Thanos isn't going to be as satisfied with his choice as he thought he was going to be and he, obviously the next avengers movie is going to have lots of ways that that is fleshed out and the next avengers movie is going to deal with that but i know that for me there's been plenty of times i did what i thought was the right thing and even though it cost me sacrifices and even though it cost me pain or whatever else i still did it and thought i was doing the right thing and it wasn't until days or weeks or years down the road that I realized I was completely wrong and um, that I made choices that hurt people, that I did things that caused people I cared about to suffer, that put friendships and relationships and ministries in danger, that I thought I was doing the right thing, but I was wrong. And, um, and uh, we're actually... Um, JP, I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to separate the the motivations there in a moment. Um, but Thanos in the in the film, and so far I've always been talking about the film. Thanos in the film wanted this altruistic thing of doing what he thought he was was right in, and I, I know that's where I've been before. I've made those mistakes. But there's a scripture that the whole time I was watching Thanos do his deal, um, this scripture was running through my mind. Um, it's actually two scriptures. They say the same thing. Um, Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25. It says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. And then the same verse is repeated two chapters later in Proverbs. There's a way that appears right, and some versions say to a man, but in the end it leads to death. I know that Thanos thought, I, I believe Thanos thought what he was doing was the right thing, but in the end, obviously, it led to death for a lot of people. Um, it led, you know, Gamora's death, and my daughter, I sat the, when I watched Infinity War, my 10-year-old daughter was sitting beside me, and she ugly cried for about 45 minutes after Gamora was killed. And I believe that, honestly, it also led to a bit of Thanos' death, that he died a little bit, or a lot, in what he was doing. Um, and this scripture in Proverbs 14 and Proverbs 16 says, There's a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. Now, I don't want you to think I'm saying that every bad choice is going to automatically get you killed, or you're going to snap away like the Winter Soldier or anyone else. What I'm saying is this. If you think you're making the right choice, that doesn't always mean you're right. And when we make the wrong choice, it leads to death. It leads to not just like a physical death. It could be dying a little inside. It could be dying a little spiritually. It could be dying a little physically. And we think we're right, but we're just, sometimes we're wrong. And I think it has to come to a point where we re, where we stop, and I'm not saying don't be confident. Obviously, be confident in yourself. But what I'm going to tell you is this, is we can't, 
put our confidence over sound logic and reason. We can't put our confidence over sound logic and reason. And um, that just because we think we're right doesn't mean we are. And if, if, we, if we're banking our full confidence on just the fact that we know everything and we know the right things, then we're going to be hurt. We're going to be disappointed. Because I've, I've done that before. Um, like uh, 2000, I believe 2005, I pulled up to a gas station. Yes, conf- yeah, there's a difference between confidence in yourself versus confidence in God's plan. Um, about 2005, I pulled up to a gas station, and uh, I knew what I was doing. Pulled up, pumped my car full of fuel, and I drove away. You know, basic thing, because I knew what I was doing. I didn't pay attention to anything else that was going on around me. I didn't read the signs. I didn't look at the stuff. I just, I, I got gas. I'd gotten gas a million times before because I knew what was right. I knew what I was doing. Um, and turns out, uh, I actually pumped uh, my 79 Cutlass Supreme because it, it was an OG race car. Um, Psalm 19 says, how does someone keep his ways pure? Right back, according to your word. That's a good input there too, Tara. Um, But I actually pumped my car full of diesel. There were literally signs everywhere saying diesel. Saying warning, not for... uh, regular gas consuming vehicles there were signs there were stickers there were indicators um they actually built the the handle to be too big or the not the nozzle to be too big to fit into a regular car engine but i had such an old school car that it actually took it in there was literally all of these warning signs and all of these things opposing and all of these things telling me this isn't the right choice but i was so sure of myself that I just went ahead and it basically led to the death of my car or the potential death of my car. Um, there was a automotive place right across the street and I realized what I had done before I even cranked my car up and we pushed my car across the street. We siphoned everything out possible but we, and then filled it with regular gas and it did cause my engine problems. Um, but I, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing but it was a path that led to death. And, you know, it's crazy um, when you compare movie Thanos' intentions to comic book Thanos' intentions. So, um, after Infinity War, um, there's a sale on the Infinity Gauntlet storyline on Kindle for $5. You can get the whole graphic novel for $5. So, I read through that. And it's bananas, comparatively speaking. Um, that how different Thanos' intentions are from the movie version where it's altruistic and it's the sacrifice that has to be done so all of the universe can live where in the comics there's none of that thanos is an angry wannabe crybaby deity who wants his way and wants to show off and is out for purely selfish infantile motives I mean, literally, the book starts after he's already got the gauntlet. The book starts with Satan, Mephisto, in the Marvel Universe telling him that he's God now and whispering in his ear. So he's got literally Satan manipulating him uh, at the beginning of the story. Um, He has uh, the Silver Surfer and Adam Warlock manipulating his actions throughout the whole thing. He's got Nebula waiting to loom and destroy him. He's got Death herself, you know, playing her own game as he's doing these things. Thanos was literally being manipulated by all these outside sources, but the crazy thing was there was nothing pure about his motives or his actions. He was selfish, and he was showing off, and he wanted to convince Lady Death to love him and choose him, and he was acting like a 12-year-old boy with infinite power. And it was ridiculous. I'm talking to the point where, like, uh, the dude rearranged all the planets in the solar system just to spell his name out. 
I mean, that's the kind of foolishness that Thanos was dealing with and what the purpose that he was perpetrating and the actions. What he, he had no pure motives. They were foolish and silly. And here's one of the things that really hit me after I read the book. There's a lot of times we think that our actions and our motives look a lot like MCU Thanos, where we're doing this for good people, for the good reasons, for the right reasons, and we're making bad choices, or we're making good choices because we think it's the right thing. When really, if we look at our stuff, looking back, we look more like comic Thanos. We think we look like MCU Thanos, or sometimes we really think we're just the hero, the sacrificial story. A lot of people I've seen even compare Killmonger to Thanos, of saying that they were both the sacrificial uh, victims slash villains of the story, and they weren't the bad guys. But reality is, we're a lot more like comic Thanos in our choices than we are movie Thanos in our choices. We think we're doing the right thing and we have this image in our minds where we think we're being the heroes or that we're being noble or we're getting away with something or whatever else. We have these things where we confuse ourselves and we lie to ourselves to think this is what's happening. But in reality, we're just choosing death. We're choosing foolishness. We're choosing our own sinful, broken desires over what we should actually be doing. And, you know, that's one of the things, though. We, we do have all these things getting in the way of us making wise choices. Um, think about it. Thanos had a whole legion, a whole, you know, culture of people that followed him that told him he was doing the right thing. Gamora and some of the other heroes were the only people to ever stand up to Thanos and say, this is a bad life choice. Um, this is not what you should do. And realistically speaking, even though those people were telling Thanos this, it's not like Thanos were, was listening. And I don't know about you, but the times that I've been wrong in my life, I wasn't exactly quick to listen to people either. That when I'm making wrong choices... And people are trying to tell me the right things. I'm not exactly super fast to actually listen and do what they're telling me either. And I think that's one of the things is we have to be able to be willing to be teachable. To be objective. To hear that what we're doing might not be the best choice. That our actions might not be the best ones. And we need to be willing to hear that. Because obviously Thanos wasn't. And... I think that we can be just as destructive in our choices as Thanos was in his. Um, going on with some scripture. In uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 through 22. And this is um, Paul talking to the Thessalonian church. And, uh, you know, he makes this statement, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Um, and he's saying, look, don't treat the ideas, the vision, the messages, the direction of God and God's people with contempt. Don't treat, don't act like just because someone has an idea or that even if you have an idea, don't treat every idea like it's something to be contemptible. But look at what it says in verse 21, but test them. And hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. Verse 21 says, But test those ideas, those prophecies, those messages, those plans. Test them and hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. You know, it's one of those things that if Thanos would have looked at it, and this goes for comic book Thanos and MCU Thanos, if Thanos would have looked at his situation with a little bit of objective evaluation he probably wouldn't have done the things he done he did sorry bad english um if you've read my books you know they're full of bad english it's okay um but thanos did what he did because he didn't test that out one of my favorite memes that came out of avengers infinity war is the one where thanos is looking confused and it says you know that i'm doing this to make sustainable resources and give life and do all these things but then, uh, you know, it says, well, why don't you just use the Infinity Gauntlet to make more resources? And then it has Thanos looking puzzled. I'm just saying, if you have the motives of sustaining life in the universe, and you have the Infinity Gauntlet, there's probably a better way to go around it. There's probably a better way to go around it. 
the Infinity Gauntlet probably could have done so much more to sustain life and create resources rather than just, you know, destroy half of the universe. But I don't think Thanos was interested in testing that. And then comic book Thanos definitely wasn't interested because he was a childish brat. He just wasn't even remotely down for hearing what the people were saying and what the people were trying to convince him to do. And, you know, he wasn't ready for that. So here's one of the things I need. I want to tell you and to hope you understand. If you have an idea, if you have a path, if you have a vision, if you have something that you feel like you're being led to do, test it. Sorry, I'm sliding this. Test it so that you can actually make better choices. Test your actions. Test your motives. That verse says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, test them all and hold on to what is good. Test your actions. Test your attitudes. Test your motives and hold on to what is good and get rid of what's not. But listen, Romans 12, 2, though, this is the big one that I think, you know, just take away from this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And look at what it says. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we actually and we let God refresh our mind, we can test and approve what his will is, way that's going to lead to death. You know, as I mentioned, Thanos, in the, at least in the comics, literally the story started with Satan whispering in his ear, telling him that he was powerful and right in everything he was doing. He had Lady Death, who was just hanging around, watching him flail around and make bad choices, when at any point in time she could have at least stepped up to that. You had all of these other things playing that Adam Warlock, the whole time, was engineering his plan through all of it, and, you know... He Thanos had so many things spinning around him in the comic version of the story that it was impossible to see clearly. And I think for us, a lot of times when we think we're making the right choice, but we're really making the wrong choice, it's because we have so many things spinning around us. Our uh, own selfish desires, our lust, our greed, our... Uh, insecurities our pride we have so many things circling around us that we can't see clearly to make the right choices and that's why romans 12 2 says do not conform to the pattern of the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind when your mind is renewed when your mind is refreshed it's a lot easier to make good choices um working in counseling and working in different areas uh one of the things that you i've heard and used and said is the thing about halt um, never make, it says halt, never make a, a choice that will affect your life when you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Halt. Never make choices that will affect your life. There's a time in my life where I'm not either hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. So I don't know when I'm supposed to make cho choices when your attitude and your actions are being affected by outside sources. Test and approve what God's will is. His good and pleasing perfect our actions if we kind of run like a diagnostic that's going to get us wounded and we're a lot less likely to do things that are going to hurt others and that are going to hurt ourselves but Thanos did that and as you watch and obviously we don't know what's happening in the second half of the Avengers Infinity War, you know, Avengers 4. We don't know how they're going to play that out. I have my own theories, but I'm going to save those for later. Um, but in the book version of the story, uh, Thanos eventually loses the gauntlet. And the heroes undo everything that was done um, with the power of the gauntlet. gauntlet. I'm reading the Romans 120 that Tara sent, just looking over that. You're right, that, you know, we... Uh, we do get caught up in our own desires, and that gets in our way. Thank you, Tara. That's a really good input um, where God you know, lets us get caught in that. Thanos got caught up in his own stuff. But at the end of the day, Thanos loses the gauntlet, and Adam Warlock gets it, and Thanos goes off to live on a quiet planet by himself, and... The, the last panel of the whole story is that Thanos realized that he had made a mistake and that 
it was better for him to have never had the Infinity Gauntlet. He realizes that it was not... He he's because once Adam Warlock has the gauntlet, he says, "Adam, it's better for me not to have it than Adam Warlock to have it." You know, or it's or I probably said that wrong. He said it was better for him not to have the gauntlet. He realized, looking back, this was a stupid life choice. Looking back at the way that Lady Death dissed him, and the way that the heroes fought, and the way that people died, and the way he was treated and manipulated, looking back, Thanos realized it was better for him not to have it, that his plan, his grand design to do all these things was a foolish plan, and he could look back and say, you know, my bad, that wasn't a great choice. That Thanos had that option because once Thanos had made these terrible life choices that ruined the world... The heroes could take an Infinity Gauntlet and snap their fingers and fix it all. With us, we don't get that option. We don't get that choice. When we make a bad life choice, it actually affects the rest of our life. And while, yes, First John 1, 9, we're told that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, our sins can be forgiven and we can be made clean, but that doesn't erase our consequences. Thanos literally lived, after all the story of the Infinity Gauntlet and the comics, he lived with no consequences. He went back to a little planet in isolation and thought about his actions. I mean, literally, the dude killed over half the universe, juggled the planets around to impress a girl, and then he got put in timeout, and that was the worst of his consequences. For us, when we make bad life choices, they affect our life. When we make bad life choices, they affect our life. And the hard part is, a lot of times, we don't realize we're making bad life choices. We think we're doing the right thing. So here's what I would just encourage you. Realize that just because you think you're right doesn't mean you are. That you should test yourself. Test your actions, test your motives, test your reasoning, test the outcome, test what you're going to do. You know, literally ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now going to lead to the life I want in 10 years? Is what I'm doing right now going to lead to a place where God is happy with my actions, where I can literally stand before my creator with a pure heart? Ask yourself, test that stuff. And, you know, as Romans 12, 2 said, don't conform to the pattern of this world. Don't let the stuff going on around you cloud your judgment to the point that you make poor judgment. But keep your mind and your heart pure to the point that you can actually see what it is God wants for you to do. Because when our minds are conformed to the pattern of this world, it's really easy to do what we think is right and end up in the wrong place. And I think there's a lot of Thanos in us where we think we're doing the right thing, but we're really not. We think we're doing the right thing, but all we're doing is bringing death in our life. So seriously, be confident in God. Be confident in where he leads you. But I'm going to tell you, don't put so much confidence in your own pride or the fact that you feel like you're not accountable for your actions because I promise you, every action counts. I tell my kids all the time, every choice matters. Every choice matters. So you need to realize the choices you're making are going to affect your life. And if you are connected to other people, the choices you make don't just affect your life. They affect all the people in your circle's life. So don't be so blind to your own actions that you think you're doing something right and then end up going down the wrong path. I'm done. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, if you're listening to this on our podcast, uh, thanks for doing there. If you're watching it on Facebook Live, uh, go ahead and share it. And, um, you know... Be encouraged in that. And if you've made some bad choices that have led you down the wrong path, don't be discouraged. There is redemption. There is hope. There is, you know, a chance for the future. But don't let yourself live in a pattern where you keep making the wrong choices. Think you're making the right one. Thanks again. This is Hector with Faith and Fandom, and I hope you have a great day.